From 1991 to 96, Toyota's four-cylinder engine found in the third-generation Camry came equipped with an engine oil cooler or heat exchanger. When Toyota removed these oil coolers from fourth-generation 5SFE engines but did not shorten the 7,500-mile all-change intervals, all such complaints began to appear. Toyota fixed the problem by honoring warranty claims, reduced their all-change interval to 5,000 miles, and recommended using synthetic motor oil. So I got this engine oil heater slash cooler from a 95 Camry at the salvage yard. I have a 99 Camry, so I'm going to retrofit this onto my car. <sighs> Hose pliers, what a wonderful tool. <laughs> this is the old rubber seal or o-ring. And I got a new one from an oil filter. This flat part of the oil filter seal will sit inside this ring right over here, which I'm going to clean up. This engine, considered a lean burn engine, generates more heat than most other engines and only holds 3.8 quarts of oil. The engine oil cooler helps to keep down the engine oil temperatures, preventing conventional motor oils from overheating, which could lead to oil breakdown and sludge. So this will be the contact surface for the oil filter. And the oil filter will be screwing onto this. Like this. Toyota's oil coolers work by using engine coolant to transfer heat to the engine oil during warm-up and pull heat away from the oil when the oil temperature exceeds the coolant temperature. Using this heat exchanger, the engine's motor oil will warm up quicker, transferring heat from the coolant to the oil. Coolant temperatures normally do not exceed 190 degrees, while ideal motor oil temperatures should be between 230 to 260 degrees. Okay, so I'm now ready to retrofit my oil cooler slash heater on my Camry 5SFE engine. So the hard part is getting to these hoses and disconnecting it from my old system and then I'll just have to pull the old tube out here and here. connection point here is right over there and the connection point for this hose is right behind it that you can barely see. I'm just relieving any residual pressure in the cooling system. Okay, I move the clamp out of the way. Okay, this is my hose clamp removal tool. So we got the smaller hose off the tube, one right here. Now we'll have to remove these 10 millimeter nuts off the water pump housing.
네. 네. So here's the old system where coolant was directed to the oil filter adapter to act as a heat exchanger and the new system where that was completely deleted. So I'm going to have to take this plug out, thread in plug, which will be replaced by this plug. That's a 22 millimeter bolt. Okay, so I'm just giving a light coat of RTV before mounting on my new seal. It has to go on these little grooves over here. There. Then what I want to do is apply a coating of RTV on the engine block. It's a good idea to replace the O-ring and gasket that's tied into the water pump which normally comes with timing belt water pump kits. And we'll put a little dielectric grease on the O-ring. Okay, let's just check this. Okay, that's good. This one's a 30 millimeter. And we're going to be putting in a 10 millimeter bolt in here. And just put some anti seize on here. Now we have to replenish the coolant that spilled out. Okay, it's filled up. So after installing this heat exchanger, I notice a 70 to 80 percent reduction in oil consumption. But what's even more amazing is on the internet, I've read posts where people have gone out of their way to delete this existing setup. 
So go figure. And we're done.